this is lesson 11 of industrial instrumentation. Uh, in this lesson, we will study the capacitive transducers. So, see the capacitance transducers, the contents of this lesson, capacitance transducers as a whole, displacement transducers, capacitance transducers in the sense that the basic principle of the sensor we will discuss and capacitance transducers are basically used as a displacement transducer, level gauge or level sensor, both liquid and solid. Uh, differential pressure transducers, because these differential pressure transducers are utilized in the, we will see in later on in the uh, flow measurements uh, and the DPT or differential pressure transmitter is basically a differential uh, capacitive transducers. Then we have pressure pickup, we will also discuss the pressure pickup as well as we will solve some problems also, right. And at the end of the lesson, the viewer will know, viewer will know the basic principle of capacitance sensor, linearization of the sensor, differential measurements, right. This basically we will discuss in this. Now, see the capacitive transducers, a capacitor consists of two conducting metal plates separated by an insulator, right. Uh, these metal plates can be either a, a just a rectangular plates. A very thin rectangular plates or it can be a cylinder also. It looks like that you see uh, it can be a two just two parallel plates like this one. It could be a two parallel plates ok. In between we have a dielectric right and so, it happens that the capacitor consists of two conducting metal plates separated by an insulator or dielectric medium. When a voltage is applied to the metal plates, equal and opposite electric charges appear on the plates, right. And interestingly, this can be a, uh, this plates can be a cylinder also that we will see in, I mean later on, it is not necessarily it can be, a, it should be a rectangle, it can be circular also, the plates might be cylinder also. That means, it can be have a a, a sensor like this one, one plate is like a one cylinder like this one and inside there is another plates which looks like this. So, this is another. So, we can take out the from here and here two terminals and if you measure the capacitance this is also a capacitance sensor. The ratio of that charge to the voltage is a capacitance. Now, see the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is proportional to the area A of the plates, ok. Area can be anything, can be the uh, can be circle, can be uh, can be the cylinder and inversely proportional to their separation D. Separation between the plates are D. In the case of cylinder, it will be separation between the difference of the outer and the inner radius of the two uh, plates and neglecting fringing, you know the fringing effect is there always in the capacitance. If we expect that means it lies that if you have two uh, plates always it will uh, like this one. Suppose I have a plates, two plates, so the lines will be like this one, ok. And that end this since it will repeal each other, so it will be straight, but this will be like this one. So, if we this is called the fringing effect. And actually, they for the fringing effect exactly you cannot get I mean mathematical expression for this fringing effect. But if you neglect the fringing, then the mathematical expression of the capacitance looks like this. C equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r a by d farad. F is farad. If this f is basically farad, and where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. It is a vacuum and with a value of 8.854 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter. Epsilon r is the dielectric constant of the material of the gap. For r, epsilon r, r is equal to 1 and a is the area, so it should be in meter square and d is in meters, right. The capacitance is a function of a shape and so we can see that capacitance is a function of a shape and size and permittivity. 
and alterations of A, D or epsilon R causes a change in capacitance as shown in figure 1. We will show the figure 1. So, that means you can see that if either of this one either A, uh, D or epsilon R changes we will get the change of capacitance. Okay. So, if you measure this capacitance value either with a bridge or in some LCR meter. So, that change can be utilized to make it a, uh, a displacement sensors, uh, pressure pickup and level gauge. So, these are the basic three basic applications of the capacitive transducer. So, if we can measure the change in capacitance value, it can be utilized as displacement, level and differential pressure sensor. This I actually I want to tell. Now, here, here you see there are various type of capacitance we have shown. These are basically as a displacement sensor. You see the two area between the x and y are cylinders. You see this x and y are cylinders basically x and y. And you see the dielectric media might be air also, there is no problem. So, if I push it this way, you see if I push this y, x is a fixed plate, x is a fixed plate and y is a movable plate, these two can be cylinders. If I push it like this one, it can be a simple parallel plates also. Suppose I have two parallel plates, right? You see here, suppose I have a parallel plates, two parallel plates, and if I shift this parallel plate, suppose previously it was in this position. Now, we have shifted this position. So, area between this one has changed is not it. Previously, the area of cross section was a now it will be less only this much of area is there. So, we can see that the <coughs> excuse me that capacitance has been changed due to the change of area. Okay. Instead of taking plates I can take two cylinders also. So, where if I vary y that means uh, this way. So, the capacitance value will change this capacitance change can be measured by uh, some LCR meter or by some bridge. So, that capacitance change can be calibrated in terms of the displacement as simple as that. Now, you see the D can be varied also that means, the separation between the plate this is the separation this is actually if you look at this is D right this is our D. So, the D can be changed also if I change D obviously, what will happen the capacitance will also change the more the value of D, so the less will be the value of the capacitance. So, why quite obviously, this can be also utilized to make a displacement sensor. right? So, here the area between the uh, two plates changes, plates can be either plates or can be uh, can be two cylinders, here the distance between the plate varies. So, both way the capacitance change will be there, so that can be utilized to make our displacement sensor. Now, geometrical variation you see here actually what will happen you see instead of uh, instead of the uh, displacement between the plates or the area between the plates. Now, the permittivity between the or dielectric medium between the two plates are varied. You see here actually these are the two plates actually this is the uh, those who are familiar with the heterodyne receivers you know that in the heterodyne receivers we are uh, our radio receivers. Uh, we change the capacitance value to tune different radio stations. So, basically what will happen there actually I am changing the permittivity between the two plates because these plates if you look at very carefully on the, um, on the screen on this one see these plates you see here this plate this moves this is a dielectric medium it might be plastic also insulated we obviously dielectric medium has been insulated. So, this will vary in this position. So, the plates are fixed. If the plates are fixed, neither area between the plates changes. So, only the dielectric medium changes. Okay. So, what, what will happen if I take it out, you see that the, there will be more air between the two, uh, two plates and there will be less, uh, less uh, that plastic I mean that between the plates. And if I move it this side, so because it is a semicircular plate, entire separation between the two plates will be filled up by this plastic. So, the uh, epsilon r if you look at c equal to c no epsilon naught epsilon r a by d what we said in farad. So, this epsilon r will change. So, this epsilon r is changes. So, obviously, I will get a different value of the capacitance. Here actually what we are doing that we are changing the uh, permittivity between the medium. right? So, by changing the permittivity either permittivity or area or displacements I can get the capacitance sensor. Here you see in the lake this is another example of a liquid level gauge you see the uh, it is it is it is cylindrical in shape right and we have a one inner rod also right. So, this inner rod will uh, consist one plate this is one plate and this, this cylinder outer cylinder will be another plate 
Now, if we pour, pour liquid here, you see the dielectric medium between this plate and this plate consists of two different material. One is air, and that is the liquid, right? So, if the air, if 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 it is more, if you fill up this um, in this uh, tank, what will happen? You see that there will be more uh, liquid within in the tank and less of air of the um, in between in between the two plates. So, the dielectric medium changes. So, obviously, what will happen the capacitance value will also be changed. This principle, this method, this can be utilized to make a, a level sensor or level gauge and this is very interesting that this can be utilized to make a, a level of a solid as well as for the liquid. right? Now, this all in all the previous cases we have seen that this output is single ended output. right? But uh, we always prefer differential output. There is some advantage of the differential output because nonlinearity will be less. So different and output um, unbalanced output because ultimately, if I want to make a very accurate measurements, please note that I have to put that capacitance uh, in a bridge. So if I put in a bridge, so uh, if I if due to displacement or due to permittivity change, that means due to area change, permittivity change, or the uh, or the or the displacement between the separation between the plate changes what will happen your output will change right but in the case that if you if, if, a, if this output is more that will be always better for us because our that will simplify our measurements exactly that thing we are doing in the case of differential output you see the capacitance change can be c plus minus delta c or c plus minus plus delta c all the same you see here the x and y and z are cylinders area between the plates vary now, you see here I have a capacitance between this plate and this cylinder and this cylinder again between this cylinder and this cylinder. Now, if I shift this cylinder on this side what will happen? Area between this plate and this plate will increase and area between this plate and this plate will increase decrease. right? Now, you see if it is exactly in the geometric mean position then what will happen? The capacitance between x and z and z and, and capacitance between z and y will be identically should be equal right that means capacitance between x and z and capacitance between y and z should be exactly identical now if we push it on this side then what will happen you see the here if i push this one this side then what will happen that capacitance between x and z will increase because it is getting more area between the plates and capacitance between y and z will decrease Similarly, if I put on these directions, the capacitance between x and z will decrease and because the area will, will be less and the capacitance between y and z will increase. right? So, if I put this in the two arms of the Wiston bridge, obviously my V unbalanced output will be double. So, that is the advantage of using the differential measurements. This is the differential output for a, from a capacitance sensor. Here also you see that I have two plates, fixed plates P and Q and mo one movable plate is m right so i have a displacement separation between the two plates are d and if the area is if these are all parallel plates if the area is actually uh, if the exactly area is uh, d here 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 it is d here it is d so then what will happen the capacitance between this m and q and capacitance between p m n will be exactly same if this are exactly at the mid position so the capacitance between this and this and capacitance between uh, that means capacitance between p and m capacitance between q and m will be identical now suppose i push this plate m slightly upward by displacement of by displacement of x meter then what will happen you see if you displace the capacitance between m and q will increase and capacitance between m and p will decrease again the same advantage i am getting that if i put in the opposite arm of the wiston bridge i will get the more unbalanced output right here the distance between the plate varies geometrical variation again the same thing that means i am getting differential output here right now x w x y and z are cylinders now in this case you see the permittivity variations variable capacitor with differential output you see the what will happen here uh, this m this this is z basically right this outer uh, bigger cylinders we have capacitance between x and z x is a solid solid rod y is also solid rod and the z is a cylinder so what will happen normally between i have capacitance between x and z and capacitance between y and z so at, if the dielectric medium now here the dialectic medium or the w uh, i am varying 
that means this position is getting varied. If the position getting varied, then what will happen? You see here, if I move it in this side, so there is a more dielectric medium between x and z, and there will be less dielectric medium between y and z. So, the capacitance between this x and z will increase and capacitance between y and z will decrease. Similarly, if again this dielectric w is we shift on the right hand side, suppose I am shifting it on the right hand side, then what will happen? That means, if I sh show it like this, if I shift this on right hand side, then what will happen? The capacitance between w and y because I am getting more dielectric medium. So, w sorry the capacitance between z and y will increase because the, I am getting more dielectric medium and capacitance between x and z will decrease because I will get the less dielectric medium. So, this again I am getting a differential output. So, the capacitance can be you can utilize as a as a displacement sensors and you can have a single ended output also I can have a differential output right. One or more of the plates are not connected to ground and therefore, electrostatic screening is required to avoid pickup because capacitance measurements because these are basically the value of the capacitance are very small and there is always stray capacitance. So, all these things you have to take care while you are making a signal processing circuitry. Usually, this 50 cycles main supply frequency will always be picked up. So, we have to use proper shielding to get the capacitance value. Thus, Screened cable connection to the capacitive sensors can be source of error because it might change its capacitance when there is a movement between the cable conductors and cable dielectrics. So, let us now go to the uh, uh, instrumentation lab and see some capacitance based sensors. Capacitance sensor which can be utilized to measure the displacement. Usually, capacitance sensor based on the uh, three different criteria. One you can vary the area of the plate, you can vary the um, displacement within the plate that means separation of the plate and also you can vary the position of the dielectric medium inside the capacitor. The particular uh, gauge which uh, you are looking at now is basically depend on the uh, displacement. You see if you uh, if you make the displacement here the separation between the capacitor plate changes. So, obviously, if the separation changes the capacitance value also will change. So, that uh, obvious, so if you put in a bridge, so obviously the bridge unbalanced output also will change. So, that bridge unbalanced output can be calibrated in terms of the displacement because ultimately we are not measuring the capacitance, we want to measure the displacement which is our input that is converted to the change of the change of variation of the capacitance and ultimately we will give you some unbalanced voltage. This is another application of the um, displacement sensor based on the capacitance. Welcome back to the classroom. Now, you see that we have seen some sensors already in the laboratory. So, we have, uh, we have observed, you must have observed that the variation in area A or separation D requires physical connection to the moving part while permittivity with silent R variation does not because you see it is very not very simple. I mean even though I am showing in the diagrams I mean two plates are there and we are making the separation physical implementation it is not that easy it is quite difficult to have that type of making connection that two plates will be exactly parallel to each other while you are I mean making the separation that means plates I mean two plates are like this one if I have see two plates are there. So, if I make a separation like this one I will get a different value of the capacitance. But actual implementation it is not very easy, it is quite task, I mean plate might be this way or that way. So, entire mathematical calibrations, I mean entire um, calculations will be wrong. So, the, the calibrations also will be uh, will be different. Okay. Similarly, area also, if I say changing the area, I mean while you changing the area, two plates will be parallel plates, so it should be equal, exactly parallel, but in one fixed plate that is separate thing, but once it is movable, it is very difficult to keep the parallel all the way long, all the way in the entire, um, entire range of the movement. So, all these things you have to think of, right. But in the case of permittivity, there is no such problem arises because it is uh, simple, there is no change or mechanical change of the systems most of the cases, especially in the level gauge, you will find this very much true. But other cases, while I am showing one differential that we are changing the uh, another cylinder by changing the permittivity, that is also the same problem we will, we will face, right. With the variation in A or epsilon R, have a linear operating range, so it is usually 1 to 10 millimeter. 
although the capacitance transducer is mostly used for small displacement by B varies. So, it is usually it is used for the very small displacements, it works for a very for larger displacement we have many other sensors like potentiometer, presets and all these things. Usually we can use this capacitance sensor for a smaller displacement measurement. The most common form of variable capacitor used in the displacement transducer is a parallel plate capacitor with variable ER gap. So, just simple ER gap in between and I am varying the uh, separation between the plates that we have seen in the laboratory. The problem of nonlinearity between the uh, distance and the plates D or capacitance C is shown in the following figure. You know that if you can look at very carefully that the, the relation between the capacitance uh, and the uh, D is the uh, change of capacitance and D is not linear, right. You see here if I take a uh, see if I because we have seen that C C equal to epsilon naught epsilon r A by D, right. You can see this relation, so obviously it is not the relation between C and D is C is directly inversely proportional to 1 by D. So, it is a nonlinear relation because if you take a differentiation, then you find it is a nonlinear relation, right. But we can see that with the use of simple op amp, we can linearize it. This is very much necessary because in many applications we need this type of measurements. So, this is the op amp based circuit you see here that uh, you are using uh, one op amp and this is the capacitance which will be variable that means whether you are using as a displacement sensors, level sensors it does not matter. We put on the feedback path of the op amp and C f is the fixed capacitor I am giving an excitation voltage of E E x okay, and taking the output from E naught. If we assume and E naught and ground if we assume that the this, uh, this ideal op amp it is offering a large input impedance. So, that is it is not drawing any current whatever the current coming in is flowing through this path. So, quite obviously, the immediately I can write the output voltage like this, I can write the output voltage like this, this is a, I mean this is an ideal op amp if you take. Assuming the op amps as an ideal devices, I can immediately write E naught by E x equal to C f by C x, right. So, it is E naught by E x equal to minus C f by C x, right. And quite obviously, where C is the fixed capacitor, C f is a fixed capacitor, C x is a variable capacitor or capacitance sensors actually and immediately what we can write E naught equal to C f by D epsilon naught even epsilon r into A. So, you see that we have linearized it, the output voltage is directly linearly proportional to D. So, our I mean measurement is becoming more simple if we use this type of uh, arrangements. But obviously, if I want to in this case if I want to vary A that will not be a very I mean uh, good proposition because in this case you will find it is again becoming non inversely proportional to A output voltage inversely proportional to A. But some see many situations we will produce uh, use only D or the uh, separation between the plates that can be utilized to make our sensor. So, obviously, output voltage will be proportional to D. It is clearly seen that the output voltage is now directly proportional to the plate separation D. Thus, linearity is achieved for both large and small motions. In commercial instrument, this E A x excitation is 50 kilohertz sine wave of fixed amplitude, ok, amplitude is fixed, right. The output E naught is also a 50 kilohertz sine wave, this will be O wave, I am sorry, this will be wave. this will be wave. So, in a differential capacitance special mass transducer the plates are circular plate m is thin diaphragm across which the pressure differential will go I think I have skipped something let me go back. No, no problem. If I go, I 
yes 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 so in a differential capacitance measure pressure transducer the plates are circular and plate m is the figure will come in the next slide plate m is a thin diaphragm across which the pressure differential to be measured is applied right with equal pressure applied to the both pressure ports that is diaphragm is in the neutral position and the bridge is balanced and the output voltage E naught from the bridge is 0. How does it look? You see this is our example of our uh, a differential pressure uh, pickup. You see here uh, this is our movable plates, this plate is movable plates, okay. it is moving in this direction or this direction. If this pressure is higher than this pressure. Okay. This pressure is higher than this pressure, so the diaphragm will be stretched in this direction, it will look like this one and if this pressure is higher than this diaphragm will be stretched in this direction. right? And x and y are the fixed plates, actually this is if you look at it is a uh, section of a uh, section of a sphere, actually if you look at the section of a sphere and this inner side is coated with the metals. So, that inner that coating will work as a plate of the capacitor. Now, this type of pressure transducers as a differential pressure transducer has a tremendous applications in a modern day uh, instrumentations you will find everywhere I am using flow sensors and flow sensors as you know in the most process industry these are huge in number. And uh, in all flow measurements especially our um, in the case of orifice meter, venturi meters and uh, pitot tube, we use some differential pressure pickup because this sensor, this output is to be transmitted to the control room and this uh, signal is to be transmitted to the control room. So, I need this differential tapping, it looks like this one in the flow measurements, why this is important you see, we have a pipe here and this orifice, we will discuss orifice later on. So, we have a tapping here, we have a tapping here, right. So, liquid is flowing like this one. So, there is a high pressure, this is high pressure area port and this is low pressure port. This high pressure port if it is connected here and this low pressure port is connected here, then what will happen? This diaphragm will be bent like this one. And then what will happen if it bends like this one? Since I told you this inner side is coated with metal, what will happen? This is a section of a section of a sphere. So, inner side is coated with a metal, then what will happen? You see these plates will move this side and the capacitance between this plate and this plate will decrease and capacitance between this plate and this plate will increase or capacitance between x and a will increase, capacitance between m and y will sorry capacitance between x and m in will decrease and capacitance between m and y will increase. So, if this differential if we put on a bridge we will see in the next slide, if we put on a bridge I will get a large bridge balance output that can be converted uh, to the current of 4 to 20 milli ampere and transmitted that 4 to 20 milli ampere of current will be corresponds to the 3 to I mean 15 psi of pressure right. So, that is the reason I am saying stretched stainless steel diaphragm movable plates or capacitors. Actually in the process you will find that we are using pressure capsule actually capsule, capsule uh, so that is not necessarily directly you have to give the pressure will come down here because this liquid will directly come down here. So, in between there is another liquid so that it will uh, in turn make a pressure on this side so that it will be stretched like this one right. Now, you see this is our signal condition in circuit is the bridge circuit of the differential pressure pickup. We have x and y and a movable plates and two capacitors. What will happen? I, if this is increases, this will decrease. That means, if this increases, I am sorry, if this increases, I am let me go to the previous slide. Yes. So, If one pressure is greater than the other, so obviously what will happen? The diaphragm deflects in proportion and giving an unbalanced output at E naught and in proportion to the differential pressure, quite obviously. For the opposite pressure difference, E naught shows a 180 degree phase difference. What is that? If you look at very carefully, you see here uh, what will happen? You see here that uh, if I put on a bridge, so it is very difficult to know. Uh, if I look at because if this is uh, if, if this if the diaphragm moves in this direction then what will happen the capacitance between x and m will 
decrease and capacitance between m and y will increase right. Now, if the capacitors if the suppose pressure on this side increases, so the diaphragm will stretch like this one, diaphragm in that case will be stretched like this one, then what will happen? You will find that the capacitance between this and this will increase and capacitance between this and this will decrease right, is not it. So, therefore, a phase sensitive demodulation is necessary right. Even though I am saying you see that I am saying that like this one, let me see. So, I said that I have a capacitance here, I have a capacitance here, right. So, if I put a signal here and measure the output voltage is not here. So, if this is increases, this will decrease, that is no doubt about that. So, I will get unbalanced voltage right. Now, if this is decreases and this increase also I will get unbalanced, but how will I know that which side it is. So, for that reason we have seen as it as it as we did in the case of LBDT I need some phase sensitive demodulation. With the phase sensitive demodulation this type of problem can be easily I mean solved. Now, see this method is basically I, I should tell that this method is basically for therefore, this method allows measurement of static deflections because it, if it is a, a static deflection, so I can easily measure by this type of method, right? Such differential capacitor arrangements also shows the considerable greater linearity than do the single capacitor types. You will find that the linearity will be more in this type of uh, capacitance arrangement, right? Now, capacitance pickup or capacitor microphone is a very important uh, devices. Okay, is a, is a I mean you will find that is basically a capacitance sensors and the separation between the plates changes in that type of situation. You see here, this is a capacitance sensor. This separation between the D will in, uh, change, and I am measuring the output E naught. Now, only problem with this type of capacitors uh, that um, pick up is that it is only for the dynamic displacement measurement. For static displacement measurements, I won't get any output. I am using an excitations of E x. E subscript E x. So, what will happen that if there is a if this is fixed, so there is no current will flow through the capacitor, ok. So, I will get the I will not get any output whenever this moves, ok. As it happens, I once I talk, this microphone works. You see, this microphone is also a capacitive transducer. You can see here, this microphone is also a capacitive transducer. So, when I, I am talking, so this capacitance between the plates in changes, so I will get a output here, right. We know that you see that we have already seen because you see what it happens that uh, C equal to I said equal to epsilon naught epsilon r A by D. So, from that equation so I can write delta C by delta D C by D right. Similarly, delta C by C delta D by D right. So, that means sorry this will be delta C by C this will be no delta C will be there. So, delta C by C by delta D by D. So, when the capacitor plates are stationary with separation D naught, no current flows and the output voltage will be 0 as I told you earlier right. If there is uh, if there is then a relative displacement D i from the position D o a voltage E naught produced and is related by these expressions E naught by D K D tau D plus 1 as you know that sorry I am sorry. So, what will happen you see that this is our uh, magnitude and phase plot of the capacitance sensor. You can see here that magnitude is E naught by D i because E naught is the input 
d i is the e naught is the output and d i is the input right as from the nominal positions I am making and e x is the excitation that is not a I mean that is not the input to the system and the phase plot will be like this and uh, magnitude plot will be like this one and the phase plot of this one will be look like this one right. So, you can see here that the frequency range uh, of this one will be after some certain point there is a large phase shift at the beginning when the omega is low otherwise there is a I mean as the frequency increases. So, I, I, we can see here this is also uh, please note this is also omega as the frequency increases the phase shift also becoming 0 and your uh, representation or of the original signal also will be better and better. Now, as I told you as you as I told you earlier also this arrangement does not allow measurements of static displacement since E naught is 0 in steady state for any value of d i. For sufficiently rapid variation in d i however, the signal E naught will faithfully measure the motion. You can see that E naught by d i um, g omega k j omega tau often g omega tau plus 1 where tau is the time constant of the system. For omega tau much much greater than 1 right instead of omega I am uh, writing omega tau a omega tau much much greater than 1 e naught by g omega equal to k right. So, microphone usually need not measure sound pressure smaller than 20 hertz because usually we talk between 20 hertz to 20 kilo hertz that is the reason we are talking all musical instruments also within this range 20 hertz to 20 kilo hertz. So, above and so arrangement is perfectly satisfactory because as we have seen the plot phase plot and the gain plot the low frequency production is not very good, but the high frequency is quite good. So, if you go above 20 hertz, so there is a faithful reproduction of the original signal our goal is to reproduce the original signal that means, the sound pressure on the microphone. To make omega tau much much greater than 1 for low frequency it is requires a large tau. So, to make how can I make omega tau much much greater than 1 only if the at low frequencies only possibility is tau will be much much greater than 1 only then in that case it will be more than 1 if it is more than 1. So, I will get the input output my relation is uh, the input output relations will be k that e naught by d will be equal to k approximately will be equal to k is not it. So, that is possible right. Now, that we can see it again here you see that we can go back. you see here. So, no problem you can see here that the if the this e naught by d i is better and better faithfully productions to the original signal. So, make it off for low one yes. For a given capacitance and d naught the value of tau can be increased only by increasing r. Typically, typically r will be 1 mega ohm or more. So, if you can make 1 mega ohm or more obviously omega tau will be quite large so, even for low frequencies. So, I can faithfully reproduce my original signal right. Thus, to prevent loading of the capacitance transducer circuit, high input impedance amplifier is required, a buffer amplifier is required. So, there are various types of buffer amplifier, it is not very big deal now it, uh, to have a good buffer amplifier. So, we can have a good buffer amplifier and can make the uh, reproductions. Capacitive sensors now widely used for as I told you earlier also uh, the for the labels of liquids and the solids in powder or granular form. So, sensor is suitable for use in extreme conditions, liquid metals at high temperatures we can make measure it which is not possible in other liquid gases low temperatures also we can measure corrosive liquids like acids and all these things where I mean or caustics where we have it is very difficult to measure with any other sensor 
but capacitive sensors is very easy. You can have two stainless steel uh, stainless steel containers and within that I can pour some corrosive liquids and make the level measurements. High pressure process where the other sensors will fail in that type of situations also capacitive sensors was work very good because it is totally independent measurements totally independent of the pressure of the liquid. Right? Now, we will solve some uh, problem so that for the digital class let us look at. So, the problem is like this one you see we have we take it we will solve some problem later on also problem 1 the problem is like this that I have a sensor right. Rather I should first draw this uh, uh, It looks like that. I have a capacitance, a differential capacitor. Sorry, differential capacitor like this one, right? So separation is d. This separation is also d. Okay. So there is a movement of this one, which is we are assuming delta d. Right, this is problem number one. Right, so I have plates, so this is also I am taking connection, there is another connection, and there is another connection here. So, this will be C1 will be equal to C0. C0 is the uh, when, the when the capacitance plate is exactly at the mid position capacitance between the two are same. So, that is C naught plus minus delta C and this will be C 2 capacitance between this and this equal to C naught plus minus delta C right. If I draw the equivalent circuit of this one it looks like our goal is that is a variable area is a displacement type sensor, displacement type sensor with differential output. Differential output, right? where area of the plate of the plates equal to a meter square d is the nominal separation between the plates between the plates and epsilon is the permittivity, permittivity. Actually in this case we have a combined epsilon naught and epsilon r. So, for the text whatever we have discussed epsilon naught and epsilon r we have combined in epsilon here right no problem. And delta d is the displacement. It is a displacement sensor. So, delta D is the displacement right. Now, what you have to do? Calculate number 1, calculate delta C by C naught where C naught 
So, nominal capacitance and delta C is the change in capacitance. corresponds to to delta d right also we have to find number 2 show that excuse me the output voltage E naught is equal to V by C f C naught to delta D by D upon 1 minus delta D by D square, right. Now, the push pull configurations we will show in the next slide. The circuit looks like this I have a arrangement here. This is grounded. this is C 1, this is C 2, this is plus V, this is minus V, this is our this is our output E naught right. This is our circuit. So, we assume two current suppose this current is I 1, this current is I 2 and total current is I right and op amps we are assuming is an ideal op amp. So, it is not taking any current inside right. So, if this is the situation now we can write let me take a new page C for the part A or part sorry it is not part A take page part 1 C equal to epsilon A by D or delta C equal to I can write delta C by delta D into delta D is not it which we can write quite obviously minus epsilon A here the epsilon please note it is epsilon equal to epsilon naught into epsilon R epsilon A by d square into delta d with first order I mean without with approximation first order approximation. So, this will become again minus c naught into delta d by d. Now, you see so I can write delta c by c naught equal to minus delta d by d. Right. Now, current I actually you can see here I 1 minus I 2 right. So, which we can write equal to V voltage omega C 1 minus omega C 2 or which we can write V omega omega take out which will be C 1 minus C 2 right. So, if I take a new page. So, the output voltage E naught equal to I minus I upon omega C f equal to minus V C f C 1 minus C 2 equal to minus V C f 
epsilon a upon d plus delta d minus epsilon a by d minus delta d. So, this will become v by c f into epsilon a upon d square minus delta d square into 2 delta d. So, this will become v by c f into c naught 2 delta d by d upon 1 minus delta d by d whole square right. So, this uh, we have seen that uh, so this is our proof actually. So, we have seen that in these cases that how we can use a, a differential pressure pickup and I can use a sensor which has a differential output and how can I connect in the bridge all those things are we have discussed. Basically, in instrumentation you will find this capacitor sensors has basically three uses one is it as a displacement sensors as we have seen either permittivity variations or the variations of the area or variation between the separation between the plates number one. Number two is the level gauge or level sensors which that means level will change increase that means the permittivity will change. So, obviously, the permittivity change and the capacitance will change and third is the differential pressure pickup which is extensively used in all process industry for measurements of flow ok dp transmitter this is basically it is called dp transmitter. We have seen that if I change the capacitance of the differential pickup I will get a change of voltage that con voltage converted to current and transmitted right. So, these are the basic three use of this capacitor sensor as a instrumentation, but we have other applications as I told you earlier also we have discussed also that in this case that uh, we are using the sensor as a um, as a pressure pickup that means sound pressure measurements also we can utilize this type of capacitance sensors. Capacitance sensors are very use I mean uh, very nice to use because it is uh, independent of temperatures and all those things that is a great advantage of this one it can be used in the corrosive environments all those things are very much true. But please note another two most important thing of capacitance sensor that those cables which is connected to this should be uh, we have taken. So, the parasitic sense insensitive measurements we have to make because whenever we are measuring very small capacitance value whether you are using may measuring in a bridge or LCM it does not matter. So, the, uh, the parasitic I mean capacitance will influence your uh, measurements and it will pick up the signals like 50 hertz signals and all those things. So, you will be very careful about those parts. So, the non shielding should be very much good. So, that uh, if at least one part of the shielding should be should be grounded so that the uh, you can make the measurement faithfully. Okay, with this I come to the end of this capacity sensor. Thank you.